Item Number SCP-507 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-507 is allowed free roam of the facility, obviously barring anything that would breach security or safety protocols. Anytime SCP-507 leaves its private quarters, it must be accompanied by an agent, mostly at this point to make sure that it does not shift without the facility's knowledge. SCP-507 should not be physically touched if there have been more than two weeks since its last shift. The risks inherent in disobeying this protocol make the action its own punishment, should the issue of disciplinary measures ever come up. When SCP-507 undergoes a shift, faculty will be informed to keep an eye out for its eventual reappearance. It also has a tracking device implanted into it, and a daily signal check should verify whether or not SCP-507 has returned from its trip. If it reappears in or nearby the facility, SCP-507 will return to its quarters on its own. Otherwise, a retrieval team of three plainclothes agents may be sent to provide transportation back. Upon successful return, SCP-507 can be the subject of various physical tests up until two weeks after each shift. It is worth noting that SCP-507 is allowed a computer with an internet connection, via a proxy which strictly limits what information can be uploaded and to where, in its room, and may petition to use or meet with or act as a test subject for safe or Euclid SCPs that do not affect mental functions negatively or carry an infectious trait. This is a result of SCP-507's persistently clean record, and the implication that if SCP-507 was ever going to be a security leak, it would have used its faux teleportation powers to do so already. It is also worth considering that SCP-507 is actually below average in most physical traits, and that even in the worst case scenario, any SCP agent should be more than capable of carrying out a termination order. Description. SCP-507 is a Caucasian male, with blonde hair and green eyes, sporting no other outstanding characteristics besides being somewhat overweight and speaking with a vague accent of disputable origin. Although SCP-507 has an already established name due to its unremarkable upbringing, it seems to find entertainment in forcing those it meets to give it a nickname in lieu of divulging this information. Thus, SCP-507 will now respond to the names Tommy, Steve, Bruto, Guy, Houdini, and Grabnock the Destroyer. SCP-507 was originally recovered from the <laughs> Asylum, when standard surveillance following repeated successful escape attempts brought its abilities to light. All records of this incident were confiscated, and SCP-507 was taken into custody under the pretense of moving it to a more secure facility. The original theory was that SCP-507 possessed some form of teleportation ability, as it would suddenly disappear and eventually reappear in a different location. Subsequent interviews with the subject did verify that its ability could be used in such a manner, but that it was merely a side effect for its main affliction. SCP-507 holds that during its periods of disappearance, it is actually displaced into a random alternate reality. The landscape generally stays the same, but the inhabitants and climates of the parallel world often do not. SCP-507 also insists that it has no control over the time and duration of these shifts. This has more or less been confirmed by the subject being known to displace at inconvenient times, such as mid-sentence, while sleeping, or even while using on-site public facilities. If SCP-507 moves about in the alternate world, the eventual shift back will then place it at the corresponding area in our reality. A sample list of SCP-507's descriptions of alternate reality can be found in document 507-00. Mentally, SCP-507 shows no large deviations from the psychological profile for a normal person. It has confessed to have always had a great interest in the paranormal and mythological, which has directly led to its eventual permission to interact with relatively harmless SCPs. SCP-507 especially enjoys meeting with other sentient SCPs, once going so far as to request a small vacation to visit SCP-082. The request was eventually granted after persistent pleading from SCP-507, and the meeting was thankfully uneventful. Document 507-00, a sample list of SCP-507's supposed extradimensional travels, along with any demands made by it after returning. 
The subject arrived in complete darkness, leading it to assume that the current location was indoors or subterranean. After fumbling about for a possible way out, subject heard a sound akin to muted breathing nearby. Subject then decided to curl up in the nearest corner and wait it out, instead of risking a blind confrontation with an unknown creature. Request, a standard flashlight, which it now always carries on its person. Subject appeared in a replica of the facility, although apparently fallen into disuse. Further exploration led to the discovery of various corpses strewn about the area, all heavily decayed and covered in an odd type of mold. Upon noting that the corpses seemed to rhythmically expand and contract as if still breathing, Subject attempted to leave the facility. This idea was quickly discarded when it opened an exit and found that the outside world was apparently coated with the same odd growth. Request, heavy doses of voracosinol, and a fungal expert to help ascertain the nature of the mold. No exact match of the described mold was found, but it was noted to share many attributes with certain types of cordyceps fungi, see addendum 507-02. Upon reappearing, subject was reported to mutter, so many spiders. Subject refused to elaborate. Request, a handheld firearm of any type. Request was granted under the stipulation that said firearm is specifically built to only use rubber bullets. Subject once again appeared in a pitch black location with breathing nearby. Upon turning on its flashlight, Subject was surprised by a man wearing a black business suit and sunglasses with an impossibly wide smile. Said smiling man was apparently leaning in toward SCP-507 when it turned on the light, the end result being that their faces were almost touching. Smiling Man then remarked, back so soon, before Subject switched the light off again, discharged all the rounds in its firearm at the general vicinity of the man, and once more curled up into the nearest corner until shifted back into our reality. Request. None. Those with level 2 security clearance may read a full list by accessing document 507-3B. Those with level 2-507 security clearance should also see interview 507-G for evidence of a particularly noteworthy shift. Addendum 507-00 Agent went missing on at the same time as SCP-507. A full-scale search was launched to find either of them, only for SCP-507 to appear a week later. When questioned, it said that was holding onto its shoulder when it shifted, leading to both of them to appear in an alternate dimension where During the ensuing chaos, SCP-507 lost contact with and could not relocate him before it shifted back into standard reality. A new protocol has been placed in light of this. No one is to come in physical contact with SCP-507 after two weeks following a displacement. Reevaluation of previous incidents has shown that there has always been at least two weeks between each, so this time frame will be the only safe time to touch SCP-507 until further notice. Addendum 507-01 I don't care how much he grumbles about it. SCP-507 is not to be cleared for challenging SCP-076-2 to 50 rounds of tic-tac-toe. Just no. Dr. Addendum 507-02 Fungus encountered by SCP-507 seems similar to that resulting from experimentation with SCP-407. Document 507-3B Forward. Below is an archive of all documented shifts undergone by SCP-507. Each of these entries is presented with their contents in the following order. Universe Designation Retrieval used for the documentation of any complications or anomalies in the recovery of SCP-507 post-shift. Description Description of reality and description of any after-effects caused by visiting said reality. Requests Listings of any special requests made by SCP-507 upon return, or for noting any souvenirs retrieved from the shift. For ease of reference, this is a list of equipment granted to SCP-507 thus far. Handgun, loaded with rubber bullets. Only one magazine, which is carried in the gun. Knife with sheath and belt. Tank of air. 
high-intensity flashlight, one week of vegetation ration packs, waterproofed set of binoculars, tracking collar, camera. Universe 1B755E728 Retrieval uneventful Description Subject arrived in a desert environment and wandered around for roughly an hour before encountering another human. Said human was wearing a tanned leather overcoat and was described as completely unshaven. Man was extremely surprised to find a subject and demanded that the subject follow him in order to lead it back to food and shelter. Subject originally began to follow the man, but intentionally lost contact with him upon noticing that his leather coat contained no seams or stitching. Requests. None. Universe 9E266V7HG. Retrieval uneventful. Description. Subject arrived in a forest habitat with no signs of previous or current industrialization. No further anomalies were perceptible until the subject grew hungry, at which point it discovered that harvesting or eating the plant life would cause them to emit telepathic screams. Subject abstained from eating for the first day as a result, but became hungry enough on the second day onward to consume the flora in spite of the screams. Testing has shown no biological changes in the subject from this, but subject repeatedly affirms that it felt horrible for doing so. Requests. None specifically, but the subject adopted a gelatin and pudding-based diet for two and a half weeks after returning from the shift. Universe J75R633TF. Retrieval uneventful. Description. Subject arrived in a dimension with flipped genders. No noticeable differences beside this were discovered, although subject found issue with the fact that its female counterpart looks pretty much the same as the standard version. Requests. None. Universe 000 000 Invalid. Retrieval. Via tracking device. Plainclothes agents found subject sitting in an alleyway at- Description. Subject was largely unresponsive upon retrieval, and remained so until the standard questioning phase. When asked where it went this shift, subject answered, Nowhere. I think I missed it this time. Subject experienced minor motor skill impairment and decreased activity levels for roughly a month after this shift. Requests. A wristwatch which makes an audible tick as the second hand moves. Both were approved. Universe J7Q53Y8ST. Retrieval. Subject was found in its quarters, sprawled on the floor, attempting to chew through the sleeves of a straight jacket it was wearing. The jacket, leg restraints, and the loss of motor skills still present from the last shift led to the subject being unable to stand up or open the door to find assistance. Description. Subject shifted while sleeping and awoke restrained and lying in a hospital grade bed. A nurse informed the subject that he was still a patient at the <laughs> asylum and was currently suffering from advanced stages of dementia. Subject was then sedated and spent the rest of the shift alternating between semi consciousness and total unconsciousness. Requests None. Universe 9E266V7HG 2. Retrieval uneventful. Description. Subject once again arrived in the forest habitat from 9E266V7HG. The flora seemed to have remembered the subject's last visit though, and they reacted by screaming for its entire four day shift. Requests. A hug. Approved. Universe 6K321BIOS. Data expunged under the direct order of the O5 Council. Level 5 clearance required. Universe BN2 AL6 CTE. Retrieval uneventful. Description. Subject arrived in a derelict metropolitan area. Subject was unable to locate any other humans, but noted an overabundance of cats in every area it visited. Said felines seemed no different from normal house cats though, and subject spent most of this shift petting any who came near. During the standard examination procedures after retrieval, trace amounts of a Toxoplasma Gandhi variant were discovered on the subject's clothing, as well as larger amounts on its shoes. 
Further testing showed that the subject had not yet been infected with the toxoplasmosis variant, most likely attributed to the short time frame of this shift, not allowing the subject to grow hungry and seek out food. All clothing and belongings that were on the subject's person during this shift were incinerated, and the subject was forced to undergo special decontamination procedures in order to prevent any possibility of contagion. Requests: A pair of rubber gloves. Denied, on the basis that hand protection would not have protected the subject from infection in any way. Universe 12528P OS4-3 Retrieval Via tracking device Subject was attempting to return on its own, but was making less progress than usual due to the discomfort of doing so. Description: Subject once again arrived in a pitch black area with muted breathing nearby. Subject decided to seek out an exit this time via blind wandering. Subject eventually found itself at the mouth of a corridor with what appeared to be a light source at the end. Subject began running toward the light source upon noticing this. As it grew closer, the light suddenly grew in intensity and the subject was exposed to searing pain. Subject passed out at this point and only awoke after it had shifted back. Examination upon retrieval revealed that the subject's epidermis had been cleanly stripped down to the stratum granulosum in all areas open to sunlight, and down to the stratum lucidum in all areas covered by clothing. Requests: None but the subject reappeared wearing a pair of large, heavily tinted sunglasses. Subject did not notice that it was wearing these until they were pointed out, and supposed that they were probably why its eyes did not undergo the same process as its skin. Universe 7F2 WA3193 Retrieval Uneventful Description Subject arrived in an urban area, with no major changes as far as it could tell. Subject used the public computers of a library to search for differences between this dimension and ours, eventually finding that Abraham Lincoln was assassinated by his vice president in order to claim his position. This ultimately led to the presidency becoming a tribe leader-like position, where the current holder is legally allowed to be challenged and overthrown by other suitable candidates. Subject noted with great surprise that this change did not do much to alter most major presidents taking office. Many minor and or detrimental presidencies tended to end via bullet wounds, often in unlikely locales or from improbable angles, which deterred most from attempting coups at all. Requests None Universe WS6 ECU 83D Retrieval Uneventful Description Subject arrived at the mouth of a cave with intense heat. Subject walked outside of the cave for further investigation, only to find that the area around it was a wasteland. Most of the heat appeared to emanate from two suns in the sky. The subject could not discern whether they were extremely large or extremely close to the planet. Upon further examination, the suns blinked and turned away, and the heat subsided. Subject spent the rest of the shift within the cave. Requests None. Universe Q56DRU865 Retrieval. Subject found in the cafeteria, masticating on what appeared to be Description. Upon containment of Subject uttered the words, more, 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 before losing consciousness. Subject regained consciousness two hours later, expressing a strong desire for pudding. When questioned, subject claimed to see the biggest mound of pudding ever. When questioned as to why it was masticating on Upon arrival, subject claimed to be eating a glob of pudding at the time. Subject reported seeing rolling around the hallways. Hallucinations passed within 24 hours. Requests. Pudding. Request granted. Universe F249S633C. Retrieval. Subject found in service tunnel 6R3BK without original equipment. Subject was wearing a simple uniform with a similar design to the current Foundation D-Class uniform. Description. Subject shifted while dining in the cafeteria. Destination Dimension had an analog to the Foundation with a facility in the same location, although internal layout had significant differences. Security responded to the subject as an intruder and detained it immediately. During this process, the subject was imprisoned and stripped of all equipment, including the tracking device. For the remainder of this shift, the subject underwent repeated questioning, 
The Foundation analog refused to accept the subject's explanation of dimension hopping. Information gleaned from post-shift debriefing indicates that F249S633C has a Foundation analog in the Society for Containment of the Paranormal. This analog has a strong British influence, and is opposed by the covert occult group and the Church of the Mending God. Further details remain unclear, as the Society refused to answer the subject's questions, and only slipped details by assuming it knew them already. Requests Replacement Equipment Request granted. Universe 4GT F1Q H17. Retrieval. Subject was found by the cafeteria kitchen staff of site. Drenched, covered in mud, and suffering from severe hypothermia. Description. Subject arrived in a large field during a rainstorm. Subject attempted to find shelter from the rain, but found none, remaining in the rain for the entire shift. After an unknown length of time, the subject reported seeing entities in the distance. Although the heavy rain obscured the subject from obtaining a detailed report of their appearances, the subject described them as being vaguely humanoid in shape. The entities began to slowly move towards the subject from all directions. Near the end of the shift, the subject reported hearing labored breathing from the nearest entities. Requests A set of warm clothing Approved Universe 2AW 9U2 E5T Retrieval Uneventful Description Subject arrived in midair, falling from an outdoor environment into a subterranean body of water at the bottom of a large cavern. Though admittedly experiencing a strong surge of adrenaline from this event, subject reported swimming a long way before reaching land. Subsequent observation revealed a giant hole in the ceiling of the cavern, through which the subject had apparently fallen. Also reported were archways to other large caverns, most with shafts of sunlight visible indicating other surface collapses. Regular vertical grooves in the walls indicate possible excavation, despite the cavern's immense size. No other sign of life was observed. Before returning, subject realized that the possibility of shifting back to our reality so far underground might cause it to be displaced in solid rock, and spent its remaining time frantically searching for a way back to the surface. When subject succeeded, it discovered that the sinkholes were much more widespread than what had been visible from below ground. Requests Diving lessons. Denied. Universe 2UU 5I9 Q3D. Retrieval via tracking device. Description. The length of time the subject was absent from our reality was notable, being roughly three months in length. However, during this time it made several notable discoveries, including several SCPs uncontained by our reality's SCP Foundation, but contained by Universe 2UU5I9Q3D's equivalent. These SCPs have now been contained. Through this three-month time frame, the subject managed to become a member of 2UU5I9Q3D's SCP Foundation equivalent, working its way up the ranks far faster than what would have been anticipated, assuming it was made a member of Foundation personnel on the same day. At the time of its return, he was apparently in the field, working to contain 2UU5I9Q3D's equivalent of SCP. Curiously, our Foundation had sent out a task force for precisely the same reason, on the same day. Further links between Universe 2UU5I9Q3D and our reality are being investigated. Requests To be made a member of Site Personnel Denied Universe 3JT3MDDIG Retrieval Subject retrieved via implanted tracker, medevac required to Site Description Subject was immobile upon retrieval due to greatly increased body mass, measured at kilograms. Lead researcher approved emergency use of SCP-394 to keep it alive in order to obtain a report. Upon recovery, subject reported being surrounded by really f***ing big creatures resembling they quickly trapped him in a transparent container. It was then transported an unknown distance to a shiny surface, whereupon the creatures began to observe him. After approximately one day, tubes were inserted into unknown fluid which was not found upon examination. Subject reported that the tubes were removed shortly before the shift, and it observed approaching it, presumably for the purpose of extraction. Requests Services of a personal trainer. Doctor 
has agreed to let the subject borrow her workout tapes. Subject now displays a strong aversion to pudding. Universe 9J3Y6XGTY Retrieval The subject was found hanging from its ankles in a tree on sight. Subject was partially encased in insulated, reflective titanium armor upon retrieval. Description The subject described the world it had arrived in as extra shiny and stated that it was apprehended by law enforcement officers upon arrival. After being apprehended, the subject was transported to a nearby manufacturing facility and placed upside down on an assembly line where a series of metal sheets were shaped and cut to fit its body. It briefly had time to ask for clarification and was informed that the radiation from the sun was extremely dangerous and titanium reflective suits were required by law to prevent thermal radiation damage to any person or structure. Requests Sunscreen and an eye exam Granted. Universe 52J 0793GH Retrieval via tracking device. Subject was found inside a padlocked metal shed behind an abandoned house on the outskirts of Description. Subject arrived in a small room housing several dried corpses. Besides said corpses, the room was mostly bare. The only things the subject noted were a single paneless window and a light fixture on the ceiling which occasionally flickered. Subject attempted to rise to his feet but had difficulty doing so due to repeated and unpredictable surges of motion. Subject eventually made its way to the window, at which point it discovered that its room was actually a container suspended in midair by a large chain. Subject watched as similar containers passed by him and as it passed by others, via a complex web of rails above it which the chains were attached to. Subject could see nothing besides this but darkness in all directions. The subject then tried to wait out its time in this dimension by falling asleep, but found it difficult due to a newly discovered quality of the corpses. During moments of darkness caused by flickering, the corpses rearrange themselves into poses which would be logical for living people during that particular moment. If the subject was looking out the window, the corpses would be crowded around him in an attempt to get a better view. If the subject was sitting, they would also be seated in a pattern to form a full circle. If the subject attempted to reach the light fixture, they would act as a support or seem to be in the process of pushing him upwards, etc. Requests None Universe YTF 5N2 QOO Retrieval Uneventful Description Subject arrived in a crowded casino like area. Subject noted that the only type of machine available was something similar to slots, but they apparently required no money to play and gave out nothing upon a win. Upon actually sitting down in front of one and trying it, the subject discovered that the machine dispensed a small slip of paper with writing on it upon every pull of the lever and spin of the symbols it displayed. Subject could discern no real pattern to what symbol would produce what type of note, but wrote down a list of its attempts and what it received from each, just in case. Open list of results. Jewel Crescent Claw. If given a slice of death, could you tell how large it was? Hammer Crescent Crescent. A poor base leads to rushed patch jobs. Crescent Hammer Jewel. Deja Who? Claw Circle Hammer. There are things worse than death. For one, not dying. Crescent Hammer Crescent. There will always be someone to look after you. Crescent Jewel Crescent. They're not that jolly. It's just stuck that way. Hammer Crescent Hammer. There will always be something to look after. Claw Claw Claw. The future is looking bright. Requests. None. Universe FN3 05P KHC. Retrieval. Uneventful. Description. Subject appeared in a white corridor with steel doors lining both walls. Each door had a keypad, a small speaker system, and a clipboard containing forms written in undecipherable characters. As the subject approached one door to examine said clipboard, the door's attached speaker turned on and began to address it. Subject was informed that the voice belonged to the person locked behind that specific door, and that he was wrongfully imprisoned, then left to die. 
The prisoner then pleaded with the subject to release him from his cell. Subject jokingly replied that he would free the prisoner if he promised not to stab the subject upon release. There was roughly a seven second pause before the prisoner asked what stabbing was. After a moment of deliberation, the subject defined stabbing as putting a hole in someone. Another pause followed. The prisoner eventually affirmed that he could not stab the subject because all of his objects were very blunt. Subject did not open that door or any of the others. Requests None. Universe I5237GZ8M. Retrieval via tracking device. Subject was in a holding cell of the police station under charges of public indecency. Extraction was successfully made with no complications. Description Subject arrived in an area apparently undergoing a large snowstorm. Subject attempted to find shelter but could not find its way in the storm, and had almost succumbed to exposure by the time it was located and pulled into a cave by a man covered in protective furs. The man helped the subject out of its wet clothing. Although he did not have an extra set of garments, he led the subject to an underground hot spring his cave was connected to. When the man was sure that the subject was regaining its strength, he removed his furs and entered the spring as well. Subject was extremely surprised to discover that the man was a second SCP-507. Subject noticed no obvious physical differences between itself and the double, although the alternate 507 had a pattern of tribal scarring across his torso, as as well as at the bases of some of his limbs. Subject and the double remained in the cave and conversed with each other until the subject shift ended. Requests Subject drew a replica of the alternate 507 scars from memory, and asked for any information on possible cultural or symbolic meaning behind the patterns. None have been found so far. Universe S4351U P09 Retrieval via tracking device Subject recovered in a cornfield and with unidentified brown liquid splattered on its cheek. A human heart with the words, I need you, written with the same liquid was discovered in the subject's hand. Subject claimed that said object was not in its possession during the shift and does not know how it came into its possession. Researchers are attempting to identify the liquid. Description Subject arrived in pitch black darkness with the sound of crying nearby. Upon activating its flashlight, Subject discovered the Smiling Man from previous shifts leaning towards him. Brown liquid leaked from around its sunglasses. Smiling Man pushed its face closer to Subject's and uttered the phrase, Why did you do this? Smiling Man then wiped off a portion of the brown liquid from its eyes with its hand and began caressing the Subject's cheek with it. Subject forcefully pushed Smiling Man away. Subject observed that the Smiling Man's business suit contained several holes, with brown liquid trailing down from them. Subject drew its firearm and pulled the trigger. However, for unknown reasons, the pistol did not fire. Smiling Man began slowly walking towards Subject. Subject ran for approximately 10 minutes and spent the rest of the shift huddled in a corner. Requests A more reliable pistol Denied, as the cause of the error is unknown. Universe 9E266V7HG53 Retrieval via tracking device. Subject was discovered 7 kilometers, 4.3 miles, northeast of the facility. Description Subject shifted while reading in its quarters. Subject found itself returned to the forest habitat containing telepathic trees. The trees remained silent upon its entry to the environment. The subject admitted that despite its previous experiences within the environment, it was curious about the absence of any human habitation. The subject propelled itself to the highest ground it could find in order to see over the tree canopy. The subject found a clearing on top of a hill. The subject reported seeing a huge, semi-translucent blue dome covering the entire forest. The tree canopy extended out to the edge of the dome, with foliage so thick that looking up and through it was unfeasible. Subject reported itself to see the dome slightly off-center, suggesting it was not underneath the direct middle. Requests None Universe 5Z475T7YB Retrieval Subject was found prone and unresponsive in its quarters. Subject was bleeding significantly. Several deep gashes were discovered in the left side of the subject, just under the armpit. The claw marks extended to the bottom of the rib cage. Subject received traditional first aid and was committed to the on-site infirmary. 
description. The subject woke up on a snow-covered plane. Subject did not have its backpack on hand at the time of the shift, having been asleep. All that went with it was its bedsheets and pajamas. Subject reported having seen a TV show of how to survive in a cold environment before the shift. It attempted to build a crude snow cave using its hands when it was interrupted by a large white bear. This is the extent of its recollection. Requests. A proper weapon. Granted. Losing subject to a non-anomalous polar bear would be a waste of Foundation resources, and an embarrassment. Subject shall receive a knife, sheath, and belt, and is required to keep these items on its person at all times. Universe 3G814H9UX Retrieval Recontained in the kitchen, missing left hand, and using expletives in an uncontrolled fashion. The subject was returned to the infirmary. Description The subject transitioned into a dimension very similar to our own at first glance. The subject was apprehended by Foundation personnel in the infirmary, and questioned about his small canines. The subject admitted to not knowing what that meant, but quickly worked it out after his interviewer opened its mouth and pointed to its set of large fangs located either side of its incisors. The interviewer also commented on the subject's roundish body shape, which was considered unusual and fascinating in this dimension. Despite these differences, the subject described the creatures who interviewed it as kind. They proceeded to bring the subject a large amount of food. The subject noted a distinct lack of anything green in the meal offered to him. When later told to elaborate by Foundation personnel, he stated, It was all meat. After eating the meal, two of the creatures containing the subject in their equivalent of the infirmary escorted him into a small room nearby, containing a locket hanging on the opposite wall. They told the subject to remove its clothes and stand in front of the locket. After the subject had done his order, they opened the locket and exposed it to a green orb for approximately 8 minutes. The subject noted the lack of any scar tissue on his left side, and a strong feeling of general well-being. The next day, a creature came to him and asked for a small portion of his skin and musculature in order to study genetic differences. To this, the subject responded with, only if you provide me with another delicious meal. The creature was visibly excited by this outcome. A small biopsy was conducted on the subject's upper right thigh. The subject described this experience as painful, but totally worth it. A huge amount of unspecified meat was delivered to the subject upon completion of the biopsy. The subject was then released to explore the facility. For the next month and a half, the creatures continued to supply the subject with mounds of meat and engage it in amiable conversation. The subject acquired 14 kilograms, or 30.8 pounds of fat during this time. On April 16th, 2015, the subject was escorted to the kitchen equivalent. It was then put on a chopping block and its left hand was removed. Requests. A replacement hand. Granted. Universe 8A891T710. Retrieval. Uneventful. Description. Subject arrived in a large opaque dome filled with plants without any signs of human habitation. Subject stated that walking was difficult and uncomfortable. Upon further investigation, the subject found a window displaying what was described as pitch black with earth on the horizon. Several minutes later, a tall humanoid encountered the subject, inquiring about his comparative short stature. Subject replied asking where he was. The humanoid stated that they were in Base 12, Oxygen and Vegetable Wing. Subject asked what Earth was doing in the sky. Humanoid appeared puzzled and responded, that is the moon, gesturing to Earth. A short argument ensued and the humanoid departed. Subject noted that after the Earth set, a rocky gray landscape became visible, becoming identifiable as the lunar surface after an hour or so. Subject attempted to explore more of his surroundings, but shifted back to our reality shortly after setting out. Requests. One camera. Denied. Universe 7JO17535X. Retrieval uneventful. Description. Subject shifted while attempting to fall asleep. Subject arrived in a large body of fresh water. Subject swam upward an estimated 35 meters before reaching the surface of the water and beginning to tread. Subject noted several dark shapes moving in the water beneath it and bright lights in the distance, but did not attempt to approach either. Subject reportedly found breathing extremely difficult. Subsequent physical tests indicated that the subject had ingested substantial amounts of methane during the shift. Requests 
a tank of breathing gas as part of its equipment. Approved. Universe 99P UT124J. Retrieval. Subject was found in the location in which it had left, curled up and crying violently. Subject screamed, why did I have to go, when an attempt was made to interact with it, and suffered from severe depression for several days thereafter. Agents described a beautiful smell coming from it. Description. Subject landed in a place it could only describe as impossibly beautiful. Subject stated that it was like the best parts of every place all put together, and that the beauty was so overwhelming that the subject had no desire to move. When it began to become thirsty and hungry, plants apparently extended vines and shot a liquid into its mouth, which it described as the best anything I have ever drunk ever, sweet and rich and everything all at once. After roughly one day, subject having never looked at his watch during this time had no clear knowledge of the duration, a humanoid female close to the subject's age unexpectedly encountered the subject as she walked over a hill. Subject claimed that they had a long conversation, despite not speaking the same language, and was unable to explain how this was possible or the form their communication had taken. Subject claimed that he understood her answers to his questions about her and their location, but was unable to articulate them. Subject described her with, I know I'm sounding repetitive here, but she was the most amazing person I've ever met. With some reluctance, Subject stated that they had been about to kiss when the shift ended. Subject then had to be prevented from committing suicide. Tests after successful psychiatric treatment indicated Subject was considerably more physically fit, and had gained roughly 8 IQ points despite having done no significant exercise during the shift. Requests Various foods, beverages, and pictures of women widely regarded as very physically attractive. The subject considered all granted requests unsatisfactory, making statements such as, it's not the same, and no no, not like that. Subject then requested a way to stay in a universe permanently after having arrived there, and was reminded that that was impossible. Universe 6A593W132 Retrieval Subject returned malnourished and suffering from the effects of an unknown toxic substance from which it soon recovered. Later analysis showed the substance to be a venom containing a high level of silicon. A small silicon-based crystalline creature was hanging from the subject's finger when the subject returned. The specimen subsequently died of unknown causes, possibly starvation. Description Subject shifted into a dimension which primarily contained crystals of varying sizes and hues. The sun was described by the subject as smaller and bluer than ours. The ground was covered in sand, also of various dull colors. The subject noted that many of the larger crystals were moving slowly and appeared to be alive. It also saw smaller creatures which scuttled around quite rapidly and seemed to be composed of crystal. The subject spent some time searching for water, which it found. It noted that there seemed to be considerably more of the smaller crystalline animals near the water. Shortly before the subject returned, it was attacked by one of the small creatures. The subject described both the larger and smaller creatures as both looking and behaving similarly to crustaceans. Requests Food and water that doesn't taste like sand. Granted. Universe T34DE204F Retrieval Subject was found in Sector A highly restricted area. Subject was swiftly removed. Description Subject shifted into a dimension with a world covered in salt water. Subject then equipped its scuba gear and decided to see what was below the water. Subject ascended for approximately 3 minutes and believed it had traveled 50 meters down before seeing the ocean floor. The floor was covered with abandoned buildings and rubble, corroded and covered with aqueous plant life. Several skeletons could be seen. Subject had searched the underwater city for three minutes when he spotted three black fish-like creatures moving towards it. Subject drew his knife and firearm before shifting back into our dimension. Requests. A pair of waterproof binoculars. Approved. Universe CZE-5827DG. Retrieval uneventful. Description. Subject appeared in the bedroom of a suburban home, and was greeted by several people of varying age and race. They welcomed him to their home and showed him around the building. Subject noted an abundance of windows in the building. Upon looking outside, Subject noticed that the house was encased in a large glass dome, and was being viewed by several cameras, and the residents explained that they were a part of a zoo-like enclosure. 
Requests. None. Universe DRK-038891. Retrieval. SCP-507 was found in Dr. King's office. Description. Subject appeared in what seemed to be an endless forest of apple trees. It was inhabited by a race of humanoids, all of whom appeared identical to Dr. King. The entity seemed to recognize SCP-507, and gave him a message to pass on to Dr. King. Come home, lost child. We have sent you the signs countless times, yet still you do not come. Do you not remember the holy orchard of your birth? The wind through the trees, the crisp delight of her holy fruit? Please come home. We miss you. Requests to pass the message on to Dr. King. Denied for the safety of SCP-507. Universe SCP LD-9431. Retrieval, uneventful. Description. Subject appeared in a highly furnished version of its containment chamber. After leaving the chamber, it discovered that the facility was inverted from the main reality, in the sense that all of the offices were replaced with containment chambers and vice versa. Further inquiry revealed that Foundation staff were being contained due to their ability to create dangerous experiments. The primary containment staff consisted of more docile versions of the baseline reality's humanoids in containment. Notably, less hostility did not make their lack of containment any safer, causing the facility to be filled with biological, mimetic, and other hazards. It is unknown how a K-class scenario has not occurred, despite the apparent lack of containment. D-class and non-research staff were unchanged. Requests. Heightened psychological evaluations on staff. I swear you guys aren't telling us something about 507. It didn't bring anything dangerous back somehow, and never does. Not to mention it was in a mental institution and aspires to be a researcher. Agent McDaniels. Universe WQK-112994. Retrieval uneventful. Description. Subject appeared in the middle of a large, dense forest. The forest showed no signs of life beyond plant life, including insects or animals. Subject attempted to leave the forest on foot, but despite traveling for over three weeks on foot, Subject was unable to locate an end to the forest. Subject was forced to scavenge edible seeming nuts and fruit in order to survive. Requests that enough non-perishable rations to last a week be added to its gear. Granted. Universe CDY-745924 Retrieval, uneventful. Description. Subject appeared in a world entirely made out of candy. It described it as Willy Wonka's factory, but on steroids. Upon reappearing, subject appeared to have gained 6.8 kilograms, 15 pounds. Requests. More candy. Denied. Universe 12N U67722F. Retrieval uneventful. Description. Subject arrived in an urban area in a reality which appeared at first to be modern day Japan. Subject figured out that it had not left the Western Hemisphere through attempts to gather information, including successfully accessing the internet on a tablet computer it found in an internet cafe. Subject spent several days without issue in the alternate reality before shifting back. Based on Subject's research and limited conversations with locals, it figured that the point of divergence from our universe was that Japanese sailors discovered a way to America in the 14th century. As a result, America's western coast was colonized by the Japanese, and the influx of food and natural resources to Japan resulted in Japan's dominance first in Asia, then globally. The Japanese Empire and European powers apparently waged several wars in America and Western Asia. The most recent war with the British Empire in 1932 resulted in a Cold War that lasted until Britain's bankruptcy and the independence of its overseas territories in 1977. Requests. None. Universe 92P15292FJ. Retrieval via tracking device. Subject appeared in with severe lacerations covering its left side and arm. Description: Subject appeared in a pitch black space, with lights floating at head level. Closer examination of these lights revealed them to be a type of fruit, hanging from trees with a black bark. The flashlight was noted as being less effective than before. A distant light moved steadily towards the subject. 
Upon closer inspection of this light, subject reported it to be a humanoid figure, glowing brightly. The entity was non-hostile and preferred to follow subject. After two hours, the entity left the vicinity of the subject and disappeared among the strange fruit. Subject noted heavy breathing approximately one hour after the entity's departure. Subject used the flashlight to illuminate the source of breathing, which proved to be a pitch black entity, making it almost invisible in the dark. Subject fled from the entity, which gave chase and attacked subject, causing lacerations down subject's left side. Requests Medical attention and a stronger flashlight. Approved. Universe HYO 772939. Retrieval. Subject appeared in its quarters, bleeding from the eyes, ears, nose, and mouth. Subject remained in a coma in Medical Base C for 42 days after returning. During this time, Subject did not shift or change position at all. Description. Subject recalled appearing in a shifting white landscape, looking upon a city made of pure light. The buildings of this city were built into impossible shapes and forms that rendered Subject incapable of describing it in any detail. Out of the city came two massive beings who approached the subject. The very presence of these beings, presumably the inhabitants of the city, caused extreme pain and rapid blindness to the subject. The beings attempted to speak to the subject, only for the subject's eardrums to rupture under the force of their words. Subject's last reported feeling is a sense of coming undone before it blacked out. Note, Despite reporting massive injuries, Subject was completely uninjured when it awoke from its coma. An inquiry into this is ongoing. Requests. None. Universe HYX 32421K9. Retrieval. Via tracking device, Subject was discovered in <laughs> National Park in the back of a cave halfway up the mountain. Subject was dressed in animal skins and was clutching a crude crossbow. Description. Subject was transported to a world where human beings never became the dominant species on Earth. The ruling species was a form of reptile, possibly a descendant of the larger dinosaurs. Subject was immediately apprehended upon arrival, stripped of its clothes and gear, and placed on a human reservation. These reservations were used for hunting the remaining humans for sport. Subject was able to survive due to its higher reasoning skills and ability to hide. Subject spent the remainder of this shift hiding in the trees in order to survive the various hunting parties. Requests. Replacement gear. Granted. Universe H37 U24 M13. Retrieval. SCP-507 appeared nude in basement hallway 4C, although it still had its belt, knife, and flashlight. Description. Subject arrived in an environment where all artificial objects and structures were replaced with living, deformed humans. Subject conjectured that the population took turns performing various mundane jobs along with acting as its own infrastructure and food source. Subject's clothes were stolen by other people, although it did not have to complete any jobs in its time there, about seven days. Requests. To not have to see any people it does not need to for a few weeks. Granted for three weeks. Universe G31 E20 I14. Retrieval found approximately 120 kilometers away from original location. Description Subject appeared in a dimension made of varying forms of gelatin. The area appeared to be a flat plain stretching to the horizon with occasional small hills about 20 kilometers apart. The subject traveled for about a day before climbing a hill and noticing a metal object glinting in the distance. The subject continued to travel for several days, occasionally sipping from puddles of liquid gelatin or sleeping, and was still several kilometers away from the metal object before returning to our dimension. Requests Subject refused to consume soft foods for nearly a month. Universe S33 4G3 BG4 Retrieval Appeared about 15 feet above the ground in the site cafeteria. Description Subject appeared in a large basketball court, which was occupied by six individuals playing basketball. 
This group included two humans, two trilaterally symmetrical insectoid beings, one squid-like organism with a sharp rough brown skin, and one hovering yellow spherical being with eight triple-jointed arms. Subject asked where he was, and was told he was in an all-species sports center. Subject then checked several rooms with various games, most of them unknown and several unplayable by humans, before being taken to a locked room by two creatures wearing orange and pink uniforms. When the subject asked why he was brought there, one of the creatures claimed that he was being held until closing time for sneaking into the sports center. Subject stayed there for about seven hours before shifting back. Requests. None. Universe A10 ER5436. Retrieval. Uneventful. Description. Subject arrived in a dimension where everything was frozen in place as it was on December 24th, 2012, according to computers found there. Subject found it easy to find food and water, but noted the sky was red and pink, and displayed a message reading, Error 14528. Loading time, expected, 228 to 342 years. Subject spent nearly two months there before shifting back. Requests, none. Universe AQL 58H99M. Retrieval, via tracking device. Subject appeared in Idaho. Description. Subject appeared in a dimension where the average human lifespan was around 24 hours. Despite their short lifespan, citizens would still obtain jobs and marry, except at an accelerated pace. Subject personally witnessed a couple meet, get married, and have two children within the space of three hours. Subject remained in this dimension for two months. Because of his normal lifespan, he witnessed several generations live, and became internationally famous as the person who doesn't die. Subject reported that it was treated as a wise elder, and consulted for advice on world events. Requests. None. Universe JDP, HOV, KRZ. Retrieval. Appeared in a janitorial closet in the site basement. Description. Subject appeared two meters above the stands in a very large indoor sports arena of approximately four kilometers in length and half a kilometer in height. At the center of the arena were four teams wearing orange, yellow, pink, and purple body armor, and fatigues respectively, engaged in combat. Each team possessed four members, armed with two anti-tank rocket launchers, four assault rifles, and one tank. Subject was unable to ascertain the approximate amount of people watching the event, but he claimed every seat was full. After three minutes, Subject was apprehended by two guards and escorted to a cell. When Subject asked why he was being held, a guard responded, You have disrupted the daily games and will be held as a player for a future game. Subject was allowed to watch the games on an old-fashioned television in his cell, and learned that all games are controlled by someone called the Master 024, who regularly interrupted with rule changes. During the third game the subject watched, several researchers wearing outfits bearing an altered foundation logo were forced to play in obstacle courses. Subject returned after approximately 36 hours. Requests. Access to the site gym in case of a similar circumstance. Denied, on the grounds that 507 revisiting this dimension in the future is unlikely, and that it would not offer a substantially higher chance of winning. Universe 4H678V FG9 Retrieval Subject was found in the on-site break room, with what first appeared to be a series of deep gashes running down the subject's right cheek, neck, and shoulder. Subject informs that the gashes are actually stage makeup. Description. The subject appeared in a site break room, appearing identical to the one of his retrieval at first glance. Researcher and Dr. had been talking about nothing in particular. Equipment seen on a television show set production was present, along with men in uniforms resembling those of a TV show set worker uniform managing the equipment. Upon taking a closer look, the subject realized that the break room was actually just a set for a television show or movie. The two doctors replied to the subject's sudden appearance by expressing surprise at his entrance, but for the reason that the subject's shift back to our reality scene wasn't for another 10 minutes. Dr. also informed the subject that he needed to stop by the makeup department. Subject notes that after this, researcher then tells the men managing the equipment to start the scene over from the top. 
Subject had just returned from the makeup department back to the apparent set when it shifted back into our reality. Requests. None. Universe 3LE 4NN OUT. Retrieval. Subject was found approximately 20 kilometers from the site. Description. Subject appeared in what was first thought by Subject to be a forest. Subject quickly determined that the forest was in a concrete heptagonal tunnel, lit by an unknown brand of blue fluorescent lamp, with each side approximately 8 meters long. Subject then discovered that the tunnel contained an incredibly diverse amount of plants, containing many that do not naturally grow even on the same continent. Subject soon found the phrase, 043 warning, written in yellow spray paint exactly every 100 meters, with an abnormally large bloody handprint on the wall near each message. Subject attempted to find an end to the tunnel, eating many of the recognizable plant species he could find, but did not reach the end. Subject shifted back after six days. Requests. None. Universe TE2-001-AN9. Retrieval. Subject fell approximately 9 meters to the site's roof and broke his leg. Subject is currently healing in the site infirmary. Description: Subject woke up in a dark room, with a clock displaying the time and date as 7.33.84.31.20 GAN01. Subject quickly found a staircase and ascended 8 levels of stairs before reaching what the subject described as an airplane control room overlooking a destroyed airfield, with several dozen stone statues standing in various poses outside. After the subject blinked, it was noticed that almost every visible statue had moved. Subject spent the remaining 4 days of the shift hiding in the stairwell with his flashlight, attempting to read magazines and flight manuals in an unknown language. Subject noted no people during this shift, but claims to have heard explosions in the distance three days into the shift. Requests. None. Universe YQ6927DH7. Retrieval. Subject was retrieved in a large blue dog costume, with large patches anomalously fused to the subject's skin. The costume was removable, but large portions of the subject's skin had to be taken off, prompting a skin graft. Description. Subject arrived in a building exactly like the foundation site, excluding that all staff seemed to be wearing anthropomorphic animal costumes. The staff quickly tried to corner the subject, talking about something called being furred. The subject escaped and ran off in a different direction, but due to its broken leg sustained during the last shift, was caught by a different staff member, who then put a large blue dog costume on the subject, who then felt a large amount of pain and shifted back. Requests. A thin skin suit. Granted. Universe N3O MSI R1C. Retrieval. Uneventful. Description. Subject appeared in an alternate foundation site where everything was a shade of red, including all living organisms. Subject was contained and designated as an anomalous object due to his strange appearance. Subject was contained for about 20 hours before shifting back. Requests. A green blanket instead of its current red blanket. Granted. Universe M7E F52198. Retrieval. Uneventful. Description. Subject appeared in a featureless white room, containing nothing but the subject and the late 41st President of the United States, George H.W. Bush. George H.W. Bush proceeded to produce wet broccoli from an unknown location and continually throw it at the subject, while repeatedly saying, 1992. Requests. None. Universe 2Q2 W1E R18. Retrieval. Uneventful. Description. Subject appeared in a room with entirely black walls, ceiling, and floor. After the subject got its bearings, it attempted to knock on several walls. After knocking a few times, the subject noticed a humanoid entity standing in the corner. Said entity was wearing a standard Foundation D-Class uniform, and appeared human from the neck down, but the entity's head was that of a domestic house cat, complete with fur and whiskers. The entity then proceeded to hit 507 in the stomach with a baseball bat it had been holding. When asked why it did this, the entity responded, You know damn well, punk don't leave. The entity then walked through one of the room's walls. Subject spent the remainder of its shift unsuccessfully attempting to break out of the room. Requests. None. 
Subject's bruised abdomen taken care of. Universe 493 SPA 4D8. Retrieval. Subject recovered 17 kilometers away, riding to the site with a recovered bicycle like vehicle. See below. Description Subject woke up in a field near a farmhouse and a barn. The subject went to the farmhouse to attempt to find signs of life and was greeted by an elderly Caucasian man and the man's family. The man was able to somewhat communicate with the subject using a book that the subject later found to be a Spanish to English dictionary. The subject gave a cover story of having developed partial amnesia and managed to find that he was in a country that had rebelled from the prominent Spanish Empire. The subject was given a ride into a nearby town and some money and spent most of the remainder of its shift in the town's public library, using an advanced computer system that offered English as a language. The subject managed to find a vehicle resembling a bicycle in a trash can and was riding said vehicle when it shifted back to our reality. Retrieved items. One vehicle resembling a bicycle, but with three wheels in a row, a seat with a backrest, and a broken brake system. Several paper bills printed with purple ink depicted various unknown individuals in Spanish phrases. Requests. None. Universe 9527YDABBA. Retrieval. Subject appeared in the medical wing of sight. In screaming and wildly swinging a chair. Description. Subject appeared in the maternity ward of a large hospital. Subject was discovered by a being dressed as a nurse, checking on the infants. Subject was unable to describe the appearance of the nurse as the subject began screaming every time it tried. Subject submitted what it claimed was a drawing of the creature, but it was merely a wild mass of jagged lines. The creature spoke to the subject in a pleasant voice that it had been upsetting the other patients with its strange appearance and that it was time to start the operation. The nurse then pounced on the subject and wrapped him in a straitjacket before wheeling him into an operation room. When the straitjacket was removed, subject jumped off the table and attempted to fend off the creatures when it shifted back. Retrieved items. One chair. It appears to be a normal office chair, but further tests must be performed. Requests. A memory wipe. Denied. Universe QAZ 568 PLM. Retrieval. Via tracker. Subject found unconscious several hundred meters from the site, lying on the ground with various burns on its chest and face. Subject was determined to be under the effect of a high grade sleeping medication, which wore off nine hours later. Description. Subject is incapable of remembering anything that occurred in the 25 hour duration of the shift. Attempting to remember this results in the subject rapidly losing consciousness and bleeding from various orifices. Giving the subject class W amnestics had no effect. Retrieved items. A blue bathrobe worn by the subject upon return. Requests. Replacement tools. Granted. Universe BE4 5YH009 Retrieval Subject found in a locked storage freezer next to the cafeteria. Subject released from the freezer. Description Subject shifted to a near identical version of its containment chamber with a male skeleton wearing SCP 507's jumpsuit and utility belt nearby on the floor. After this, the subject found a loaded pistol nearby on the floor and used it to shatter the window to the observation room overlooking the containment chamber. This resulted in a deluge of water flowing into the room and the subject losing consciousness. Subject then awoke wearing a diving suit in a dark room with nearly waist high water and several crates scattered around. Subject then spent the next several minutes attempting to leave the room, but found all doors were locked. After waiting several more hours, a trapdoor in the floor opened and three humanoid creatures with fish like skin emerged. One of the creatures offered subject several dozen wet pieces of seaweed and various meats. Following this, all three vocalized, Don't smile back. Smiles hide lies. Stay here in unison before leaving through the trap door. Subject spent the next several days in the room not wearing the diving suit. One of the creatures returned briefly after two days to remove several rusty medieval weapons from one of the crates. The creature did not vocalize anything during this time, but hummed an unknown song. 
Following the departure of the creature, 507 attempted to find what was in the various crates, and found several items, including bags of microwave popcorn, laundry, toy kaleidoscopes, and various machine parts. However, upon opening a crate labeled G-4567-82, Subject found a corpse highly resembling, but not perfectly matching, the Smiling Man encountered on previous trips. Subject spent the remainder of the shift avoiding that part of the room. Retrieved Items A November 1996 Boy's Life magazine issue found in a crate. The magazine has not been found to contain any differences from the baseline issue beyond word choice in certain articles. Requests A warm blanket Granted Universe SKS 45K923 Retrieval Via Tracker Subject was found buried in a grave in India Description Subject spent the entire shift free-falling through the air, as if it had jumped from a plane. During the entire shift, Subject was unable to see any kind of solid ground, only more sky. The only other notable feature, according to the Subject, were immense birds in the distance. Requests. None. Universe TR3 APP6ED Retrieval. Subject appeared in its chamber, hyperventilating and collapsed to the floor. Description: Subject manifested within a cramped crawl space between two walls, unable to move. Subject attempted to call for help, but heard no noises beyond a dripping noise and an unknown creature scurrying nearby on two occasions. Subject shifted back after approximately 24 hours. Requests: None. Universe 773 URC 332. Retrieval: Uneventful. Description: Subject manifested in a large auditorium containing an estimate of 50,000 identical 507 objects. Objects seem to be having an analog to a political rally, advocating for the overthrow of the government under the organization name of the People's Dimension Hopper Republic. Within the two weeks of the duration of the subject shift, the PDHR overthrew the United States government, establishing their own government in the form of a republic entirely composed of 507 objects. Subject was elected to the Office of Representative of Massachusetts, and was about to introduce its first piece of legislation when Subject shifted back into prime reality. Requests None Universe 812 BCF 121 Retrieval Subject reappeared within its containment chamber, without its handgun or knife. Description: Subject manifested in a train-like vehicle. Upon manifesting, it noticed several other individuals seated at various locations along the carriage, who did not remark upon his sudden appearance. The subject noted that the train appeared to be in some kind of black void, with nothing visible out the windows. After 30 minutes, a humanoid creature without facial features spotted the subject and asked him for his ticket. Upon the subject reporting his lack of tickets, he was searched, and his weapons were confiscated. The subject was told they would have to leave the train at the next stop, and they would be fined 10 minutes. The subject began to explore the train, but shifted back after walking approximately 3 kilometers and finding no end. Requests Replacement Gear Granted Universe 5H4 2KP NCH Retrieval Subject appeared in its containment chamber with multiple deep bite wounds in the forearms. Description Subject arrived in a facility identical to Site- Intercom warnings stated that SPC-507 had displaced. If spotted, the object is to be punched immediately and returned to containment. Subject reported fearing for his safety until the alternate Dr. entered its containment chamber to reassure it that it was not the one to be punched back into this world. Subject stayed in containment for three hours before a f***ing huge shark materialized in containment with it and proceeded to attack the subject. Two guard personnel entered the subject's containment and proceeded to punch the shark in its stupid shark face multiple times. Requests Shark Repellent Denied on the grounds that Site has no non-anomalous shark repellent. Addendum 507-3B-00 Due to a particularly trying encounter with Several documents in the archives have been altered, corrupted, or technically never existed. Document 507-3B appears to have been affected by this, and is currently being rebuilt using backup files, references, and 
respectively. Subject matter may occasionally increase, decrease, or undergo modifications in light of this. Dr. Interview 507-G Interviewed SCP-507 and SCP-507 Interviewer Dr. Forward During a daily signal check for SCP-507, two independent verifications were returned. The following investigation led to the discovery of identical SCP-507 duplicates in its assigned quarters. Both apparently made their way to the room by themselves and had spent at least half an hour conversing with each other upon meeting. The following interview took place between them and the first informed employee to reach their location. The duplicates have been each given an alphabetical notation for the purpose of readability. Begin Log SCP-507-A Hey, Doc. SCP-507-B Welcome to the party. Dr. I am afraid you are going to have to explain this to me. There's apparently more than one version of me with this problem. Should have seen this coming, honestly. There's so many ways an alternate reality could differ without affecting my personal life, you know? So, which one of you is the visitor? Is something wrong? We've actually been talking about this for a bit. Now, you guys have been real nice to us. More than we might deserve, really. But we also know that this could be a rather enticing opportunity for your research department. It'd probably be best if you didn't know which one of us was... Temporary. Expendable. I don't know what kind of stories you two have been sharing, but our job is to secure and protect the likes of... you. Perhaps this other reality has a less benign code of conduct? And perhaps I can shoot fireballs from my mouth. We don't mean to be hurtful, but this place isn't the best source of human compassion. I'm sure there's at least one person on staff who would love breaking me open attempting to find out how all this freaky stuff works, if it wasn't for the fact that you couldn't keep studying me afterwards. Do you have to put it like that? I have enough things that keep me awake at night. Oh, good god, I know. Once there was this guy with a huge ass smile. You met him too? Nearly soiled myself. I wish I was that lucky. You know, this could be interpreted as a security breach. Who's the doppelganger gonna report to? Alternate SCP? I'm fairly sure that there's a better chance of a meteor striking this place than successful cross-dimensional sabotage. I've actually come across at least three dimensions where something fell from- You're not helping. I rarely do. Anyway, where were we- 507-B disappears mid-sentence. Roughly five seconds of silence follows. Well, now that our visitor has left, I have a question. Alright. Did you two figure out the difference between your realities? Actually, I think we did. In his world, Abraham Lincoln was killed while sleeping by his vice president, instead of by General Lee. In this reality, Booth assassinated Lincoln. Oh, bugger. End log. Closing statement. Subsequent testing revealed that SCP-507's abilities have no biological basis, and that severed pieces will still shift along with the main body. The SCP-507 of this reality reappeared three days later, and has not been informed of this incident.